Believe it or not, your old keychains that you may have laying around in a drawer somewhere or even in your pocket could be worth a small fortune. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about keychains. There are some keychains out there, just common keychains meant to hold your keys that could be worth a ton of money. Now, most keychains are very common and won't be worth a ton of money. But if you have a little bit of knowledge to know which ones to look for, you can do extremely well with those keychains. Today we're going to break down the top selling ones right now to give you the information you need to make some big money off of your old keychains. Keychains from vintage cars are some of the most valuable ones out there. Many times there were giveaways by the car dealer when you bought a car. Jaguar, Porsches, Lamborghinis, any of those sorts of things you should realize right off the bat can carry a value and can sell for hundreds if not thousands of dollars like this Jaguar keychain here. And here's yet another one. It's just a standard keychain that were made into the thousands, more than likely tens of thousands of these were made. Sometimes on the back you'll see a local car dealer that actually supplied the keychain to the car buyer. Again, many of these can sell for hundreds if not thousands of dollars. People who collect or have a vintage car want the vintage keychain to go along with the car and those are the biggest buyers for these sorts of keychains. Some of these may not look that old, they may not look that expensive, they may look like a more modern day version or a reproduction but most of these sorts of keychains are the real deal and can sell for hundreds again if not thousands of dollars. And here's yet another example. This is for a GTO 6.5 liter. An excellent one. These would span from 1964 all the way up into the early 70s. With this one here, they've sold 34 of these for over $900. So the value is surely there for these sorts of items. Any vintage sports car related keychains will sell. Porsche is a prime example. It doesn't have to be from a discontinued model either. Even newer Porsche keychains, Ferrari, or any of the high brand cars can still sell right this minute for hundreds again if not thousands of dollars this one here is a cheaper one it's leather it was made to advertise the local porsche dealer don sharp porsche sometimes the location of these can be the pricing factor this one's from oceanside california a large amount of the california dealer stuff can sell for a ton of money this one went for 249 dollars Motorcycle manufacturers and dealers are basically the same thing. This is from Stockton, California, and this is for an Indian motorcycle dealer from the 1930s. Not only is this a keychain, it is also a bottle opener. You can run into bottle opener keychains all over the place. Sometimes they're dirty, dingy, dark. They may show up in a garage, a basement, an attic. Usually in a drawer somewhere is where I found most of the best ones. Now, another line of keychains, which many people may not even realize are keychains, are from the DAV, Disabled American Veterans. And for fundraisers, they produced keychains that actually had your license plate state designation on them. That way you'd always have the right key for that car, you'd also be able to tell instantly your license plate number if you didn't remember it. And this is from Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. And it's the U.S. base there. This one easily sold for almost 980 bucks. Extremely scarce because of the location itself. There are hundreds of DAV license plate tags like this. Many of them will go for hundreds of dollars. The back has information on them as well. They were registered with the DAV, so if they were dropped in the mail, they would also be sent back to the purchaser of the tag. This one went for $675. The earlier the tag, usually the more valuable because they didn't make many of them when they first started off, as well as many of them have been lost, discarded through the years. Now, not all DAV tags were shaped like a license plate. These round ones can also sell for some very good money. It basically is the same basic principle. It has the license plate in the center, but once again, it's just a DAV item. Drop it in the mailbox and they would be returned to the owner. 
$306 for this one. Most all of these will have multiple bids. Multiple people will be interested in these. People collect these like man. They were issued mostly in pairs, so you will find two for each one. So you'd have an extra set of keys that you could put this on as well as your main key. Not only did DAV make these license plate key tags, but Goodrich did as well. Advertising for their tire brands. And this is a perfect example of one here. It's basically the same thing. These look more like actual license plates than the DAV ones, though. Highly sought after, as you can see. This one went for $522 and some change. Now, a whole other area of keychains would be from hotels. This one here is from the Beverly Hills Hotel. People who want the keychains from hotels want the keys still attached. Here's another one, and this is from a Swiss hotel. And as you see here, these can easily sell in the thousand plus range, like this very scarce one here. Now, there are also keychains that were designed and made for events and special occasions. This is a perfect score endurance run from 1922. This is basically a motorcycle race related item, a freebie, a giveaway, a souvenir sold for over $400. Again, the earlier ones usually sell for the most. There's not many of these around. This was a smaller event. There weren't many made to begin with. So when one turns up, they can sell for some phenomenal money, as you see. Now, a whole nother range of keychains were ones designed for kids or toy-related ones as well, like this one here. This is a keychain puzzle from 1953 by the Bell Company in the United Kingdom. This company made dozens and dozens of different designs. There are collectors of just these keychains. Some of the examples of the puzzle are very complicated and without the instructions, may be hard to put back together. As you see here, this one sold for $295. It has the card, though. Obviously, without the card, it will not sell for as much money. Now, age isn't always the factor in keychains as well. This one's from 1985, and it's from the Garbage Pail Kids. This is a double keychain, basically. On one side, you've got Frigid Bridget, and when you flip it over, you got Weird Wendy on the back. This is an original item, sold along with the trading cards, the trading stickers of the day. This one here sold for $162. Anybody who collects the Garbage Pail Kids will surely want this sort of tie-in item. These are far scarcer than most of the cards that you will run into because they weren't made in mass quantity. Now, just like many other categories of collectibles, video game characters and related items can sell for some phenomenal money. And this one here has a lenticular image in here. So when you tilt it from side to side, the actual image on this changes from one image to another. This one easily sold for $285. Here's yet another lot from Super Mario RPG. Most any Super Mario RPG item, such as these keychains here, can easily sell for some very good money. This set sold for $230. These are official licensed Nintendo items and are highly sought after. And here's yet another one. This is Kirby from the original video game, highly collected as well. And this one sold for $198.40. 41 cents. Many people may have a drawer full of old keychains and keys and just have hundreds of dollars sitting there with no clue whatsoever. Now, this one was issued in a series. This is from Series 2. Each series would have had several different ones so that you could collect them all. It was a way to garner some more income, some more revenue. It's an interesting item here. Easily sold for well over $100 as well. Now, here's a very interesting one from Takara. Takara made a ton of toys, including the original Microman, the precursors to Micronauts, they also are tied to some of the earlier Transformers and die-cast figures from the early 60s and 70s. It has a cow inside there. It still works. It's a pocket critter farm. Easily went for well over $100 in original issued condition. It still has the Takara tag on it. Now, a whole other genre of keychains would be sports team and mascot-related items. They've made them for movies. They've made them for cartoons and comic book characters as well. This one here is a Sankyo music box also. Sankyo makes a ton of music boxes. Music boxes on their own can sell for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. But when you add in the aspect of the Georgia Bulldogs, you increase the price immensely. And as you can see as well, it went for 165 bucks. Now, most 
most sports teams and sports in general, you will find keychains with their mascots or logos on them also. This is from Texas, the University of Texas. It's from the 1980s. There's two of them here, as you see. They are identical, but in excellent condition, and they easily sold for well over $200. So even some of the cheaper looking ones that you may assume will carry little to no value, like this Lisa Frank party favor set here, can still sell. Now this is mounted on the card. Very seldom will you find any of these sorts on the card. It's a lot of four of them. It's each version of it, all four of them, and it sold for almost $200 on its own. Some Lisa Frank items on their own can sell for some decent money. It doesn't have to be keychains. This is another one of those oddball items that most people may not assume just because it says party favors on them that they won't carry much value. It's extremely new considering the age of some of the other ones we showed you, but there is some horrendous value in these sorts of items. Toy Lines is another great example. This is a Brayer, Brayer Fest horse stable mate keychain. It's one of the lines of toys that they created, and it's from one of their conventions. It was a giveaway, a promo item. I would imagine you could have bought some of these as well. This is a translucent clear one. Most of the ones that I have seen that were Brayer are solid colored, opaque. So this one's a little more unique than the standard ones, and it's sold for 175 bucks. Now you also need to be looking out for some that may be made of precious metal. This is a Starbucks one, cast and sterling silver. It's a special edition. You can run into ones that are made out of 14 karat gold, 18 karat gold. They could be made by Fendi and major companies such as that. Versace makes them. Most high-end designers make them. Sometimes they were made to hang from a purse and were sold with a purse. This one's from 2014 and a great example of some of the modern day ones to be on the lookout for. These were made in quantity. It was made as a gift. I do believe it was around the $50 mark to purchase when it was new. And as I said, designer name brands made a ton of these. They came with a purse usually. This is from Coach. You may not even realize this is an original Coach item because it's only marked on a small tag around the ring. Sometimes that tag may be lost. Sometimes you may not realize what you have in front of you. This one isn't made of precious stones or precious metal, but it still sells for well over $1,000. It's a whole other area to be on the lookout for because the value is always there with these high dollar brand names. And lastly, an area most people should know if you've got a modern day car, is any of the remote key tags like this one here. This is from a Mercedes Type S class. These new, if you go to a dealership to buy, can cost thousands of dollars. Even for a 10-year-old car, you still may have to pay a few hundred dollars for a key tag. These can be rekeyed to match your car, and that is the reason that people will still sort out vintage and used ones because it's far cheaper than going to a dealer and paying top dollar for these very same keychains. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. This is a cubic foot. There are five more of these inside the new Chevrolet than there are inside this year's older style full-size cars of Chevy's nearest sales competitor. That's based on U.S. government estimates of vehicle interior size as reported in the 1977 EPA guide for new car buyers. The new Chevrolet with five more cubic feet of room. It stacks up beautifully. Now that's more like it.